beautiful one. The West Final in Saskatchewan. And Future Calgary just resting the horses for his November 17th. Now Buck Pierce gets flushed out of the pocket by Charleston Hughes. And finally got tripped up on the play by Calgary's junior Turner as Hughes was looking for his 19th sack of the year, which would tie a franchise record set by the late Harold Hallman. Yeah, Harold Hallman back in the day, getting it done. 1986, Charleston Hughes, tremendous motor. That's his calling card, just continues to keep on his horse and rides till he finds a quarterback. He's found him often this year. He and Cordero Law, the most prominent defensive rush ends in the league as a tandem. Make it happen for the Stampeders. Now the second down carry to Andrew Harris. Harris fights off a tackle and gets on across the 45-yard line. It'll be close to another first down. And it is a first down for the Calgary Stampeders. BC yeah, Lions, rather, sorry. I just like the hop in his step. And he, and he's, and he's, and he's, this is a great job of just letting Cordero Law come underneath. You saw Jovan Olafai just kind of wave him by and get up to the second level. And that's all you need with a back like Andrew Harris, who's got certainly a lot to prove, I think, in his own mind because of the addition of Stephon Logan as of late. First down, BC for the Lions, 46. And now Logan comes into the Lions. He busts through. Stephon Logan's got room to run, puts his head down, and gets to the 43-yard line. He runs into Brandon Smith after a gain of 20. Talking to Josh Chatelain, offensive coordinator for the football game, he talked about these two guys and trying to get them in sync. They made that happen last week. I tell you, you can't hear what you can't see. He got went through a gaping hole there. Four weeks ago, they changed their running game and their scheme and their philosophy. Really have been working hard in practice on it. That's difficult to do. 14 weeks into the seat. Safety blitz from Eric Fraser. Pierce goes over the top, but the pass is incomplete. Again, Deron Mayo was back on the coverage along with Darius Brooks. So the same look the Stampeders gave them on the opening offensive play of the game. That resulted in an interception. This almost did. Yeah, it's because Buck Pierce underthrew it this time. He had his man. He spots it out to the to the sidelines or over the top. And He's got a completion because Mayo can't get there. Buck Pierce sees him this time and throws to the open receiver, but just throws a poorly thrown football. Now on second down for the 43. Pierce has time, looks over the top, but the pass is incomplete for Courtney Taylor. That'll bring up a third down for the Lions, likely out of the range of Paul McCallum, it would be a 50-yard field goal try. And McCallum will punt. Oh, Pierce is pushing the ball down the field. Well covered there at Calgary Stampede. Double coverage on his receiver he had picked out. No chance to complete that one. McCallum leads the league and punts to go out of bounds inside the 20-yard line. And he's got another one here. They'll mark it. At the 12, Adam Bakehill's got a sack already. And the BC Lions player of the air. Steaming into the play. Adam Bakehill's been Mr. Everything for the Lions this year. Here's Perry Solkowski with more. Yeah, Gordon, he was surprised when he was named the team's most outstanding player nominee and most outstanding defensive player. Adam said, hey, he just goes up there, doesn't worry about that. But he did go back to something his high school football coach told him. And he said, make as many mistakes as you want, but don't make the same one twice. And Adam says, when you think about it, you can only improve drastically if you never make the same mistake. And he's done exactly that in his short CFL career. And here's Matt Walter on the first down carry for the Calgary Stampeders. And the tackle made by Saul Elamimian. And it has been an extraordinary season for Big Hill. Eight quarterback sacks to lead his team. Three fumble recoveries, four more forced, an interception as well. And the native of Montesano, Washington, who played his college football not far away at Central Washington, has made himself a home here in the Pacific Northwest. You can YouTube Adam Big Hill, watch him work out during the offseason. 
unbelievable what this guy puts himself through to get ready for a season. Now second and long, and looking over the top is Glenn. His intended receiver, Mo Price, was thrown out of bounds up around the 40. The pass falls incomplete. We asked BC coach Mike Benavides about the importance of Adam Big Hill. He's a consummate pro. Uh, he makes plays. He makes an impact. He creates an impact on the game. When you look at a linebacker uh, that has, you know, the stats that he has, that plays on a, a strong defense, and um, he he is just everything you want as a linebacker. Makes every play in the book. Can play defend the pass. There's times we ask him to cover receivers one on one. Just check the tape. He's uh, he's an outstanding player, and in my opinion, he's the best. Logan fields the putt inside the 50-yard line. That's where the BC Lions will take over. Hard to believe that a linebacker would lead a team in sacks. Oh, that's, I, he's good at it. And he comes from the will linebacker position, the weak side linebacker position. He played in the middle when he first came to the Lions. Elamimian comes back last year. Had to get both those guys on the field, so they move in Big Hill to the boundary. He makes the adjustment, then hurts his knee, his leg. He's out for a couple weeks, sits down, comes back, picks up where he left off, continues to fly around and make good things happen. First down, Lions from the Calgary 50-yard line. Play fake to Logan. Pierce wants to throw down the field, and now just trips it away to Logan. And Stefan Logan up and running has a first down for the Lions, or at least close to it after Buck Pierce makes something out of nothing. Couldn't have said it better myself, Gordon. Something out of nothing. It looks like he was dead in the water. Just, I mean, there's no play fake there. Charleston Hughes, that's, he's got him down. He can't believe he completes his ball. He says, you got to be kidding me. He attacks him. You know, believe me, Charleston Hughes wants a sack. He wants Harold Hallman record. Well, he flips it out there, shows you his magic. Stephon Logan does the rest. Buck Pierce just knew where his outlet was, flicked it to him and made it happen. Just short of Alliance first down by inches. So Stephon Logan returns to the Lions after a four years in the National Football League, playing for the Detroit Lions mostly. And it's good to have him back in the league. His lateral movement is second to none up here. Phenomenal scat back. He used a couple of weeks ago in first and ten. Sat down Andrew Harris as a second to ten back and really has been demoted. They found balance last week. Like I said, they changed the run philosophy four weeks ago. They worked hard at it in practice, doubled their inside drill in order to make that happen. That's when you work on your run game. Trying to get continuity there, knowing that they have to run the football late in the season. DeMarco in the short yardage offense are on for the Lions, and DeMarco squirts ahead and love a BC first down. And that's the kind of stuff you're working on down there on the inside drill. This short yardage stuff, and you're working on your run. And oftentimes, what happens is the receivers, the DBs, everybody else will be watching the drill cheering these guys on knowing that these guys have got to get better at those situations and controlling the line of scrimmage that's been their weak point all season long and now you find some continuity going into the playoffs that's what they're looking for doubling the time in practice coming out here with the new back and Stefan Logan trying to find a balance with him and Andrew Harris it's and a they risky proposition this time of the year and they ran for a season high 220 yards last week against Edmonton a first down from the Calgary 39 and back to the ground Andrew Harris ran to the back of one of his blockers Matt Norman and no gain on the play and there's another injured Calgary stampede it looks like Mika Johnson is the man who's down oh, this is this is becoming a nightmare we've so got you've had DeMonte Bolden go to the locker room already and now you got Micah Johnson down and there is Andrew Harris this season, the Lions nominee as the outstanding Canadian last year. Of course, he had more than 1,100 rushing yards. It was really the feature back. It was him and Cornish going back and forth for the rushing lead all season. Yeah, it was. You know, you can add, you know, 60 receptions, 506 yards onto that. And, you know, you look at the numbers from last year, this year, the, yeah, the rushing totals down, but the touches are very similar. 
Very similar. He just hasn't been as productive when he has had the ball in his hands. And that's due to the offensive line play as well as, as him being a little tender. Checking the left knee of Johnson as well. The nightmare grows for the Calgary Stampeders. Gordon, you said it, the nightmare continues. Michael Johnson down on the sidelines, the second defensive interior lineman out for the Calgary Stampeders in this game. We saw it happen to Bolden. Here he is right here. He's going to move to his left and actually knock knees right here with Javon Olafoye. Freak injury. Bang, it buckles right there and he goes down in a heap. You lose the interior defensive lineman in a meaningless game like this as far as playoffs go. That can be devastating for this defense who ranks fourth against the rush in the Canadian Football League. On second down, Pierce throwing towards the end zone. The pass is almost caught by Sean Gore, who tried to make the one-handed grab. Battling down there in coverage with Darius Brooks. It'll be third down for the Lions. He's right here, and oops, I, I, I'm gonna get that again for you. There he is. All right, this is a foot race. Get it out there. Sean Gore can outrun that man. Get it out there, Buck. All right, the ball's underthrown again. Almost a circus grab, like you say, Gord. Buck's been underthrowing a couple of balls, and oftentimes they say as a quarterback, underthrow your receiver, give him a chance. He gave him a chance there, but I'd like to see that one thrown out there about another five yards. Let him go get it. Paul McCallum, a 46 yard try. This will be his longest field goal of the year. Pretty easy. All right, let's go back to Perry Solkowski on the sideline. Yeah, Halloween was yesterday, but what a nightmare in the second quarter. Uh, Micah Johnson making his way with the help of John Cornish and a team member to the locker room. Guys didn't look good. Demonte Bolden walked to the locker room for further evaluations on his left knee and is under his own steam. But I tell you what, if any reaction from a player and teammates can tell you what's going on, I think he might have felt the pop, and it certainly didn't look good. He was so frustrated and disappointed when he left. So the one thing that the Calgary Staff Peters couldn't afford coming here to Vancouver, They've had two big injuries in the first half of this game. The man on the right is Dr. Ian Ald, the Stampeders team doctor, and they didn't want him to be the busiest man in the football game. Well, we knew the guy helping Michael Johnson off. John Cornish wasn't going to get many touches today, but absolutely a horrific situation for the Calgary Stampeders finishing first, looking for their 15th win for the fourth time in franchise history. And I, I get that, but... Not an expensive losing guys like they have in this first half. In two really non-contact situations, no, I mean, not really yeah. where you thought a guy would hurt him, nobody rolled on him or... Yeah, oftentimes we see just horrific accidents and injuries via contact, but... But someone, you know, with 42-man with rosters, Matt, someone's got to play. Yeah, well, I mean... 42-man rosters at a salary cap. Absolutely. They're going to have to suck it up here for the remaining two and a half quarters to find a way to get this done. And Clifton Smith on the kickoff return reverses his tracks and gets out to the 34-yard line. And Drew Tate will come on now to direct the attack for the Calgary Stampeders. And John Huffnagle did tell us that we'd see all three quarterbacks in the game today. True Tate, you know, his arm strength's not 100%, but where well, you can still spot the ball with the best of them in the Canadian Football League. And he's just a tenacious football player. Reminds you a lot of Buck Pierce. Got a lot of fire in the belly. Oftentimes that gets away from him, but he spots the ball, and he's got such great accuracy when he delivers it. Phenomenal quarterback. Luxury for the Calgary Stampeders to have three. Now he's up and throwing, and the pass is caught by Fuller. And he'll have a first down for the Calgary Stampeders on the 46-yard line. Drew Tate plays with a lot of confidence. I mean, you look at the quarterback numbers, that's not a good picture. I mean, he's cut his hair since that. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like it. Oh, yeah. But I tell you, long hair, short hair, this guy gets it done every time he steps on the football field. Seven years in the league, you think he'd have more experience and number of starts, but limited in that because of injury and certain playing time. When he does play Gordon, he's phenomenal. Started the first two games of the year for the for the Stampeders until he got hurt. And now a direct snap to Matt Walter. 
and Walter digs a hard shot as Eric Taylor got out there and lowered the boom on him, and that's a 309-pound boom he's lowering. That is not pretty. Eric Taylor just comes. He goes 24 yards, basically, with a full head of steam, sideline to sideline. He's just going to run this way, and he's going to find direct snap to Matt Walters. He just hunts this down. He continues to go, and then bam! Game of four at second and six. And Tate throws underneath, and the pass is incomplete for Fuller. And there you get a taste of Drew Tate. There you go. I mean, the guy demands perfection from himself. He comes from a football family. His dad's a coach, longtime coach down in Texas. Drew Tate is not excited. He's not happy with that. He wanted more reps than that in that drive. He's calming himself down, doing a little self-talk there. That's good coverage by Lynn J. Shell. Give him credit. The other team gets gets paid too. Lynn J. Shell stepping in for Corey Banks. Solid coverage. And did his job. So Mamer to punt again. And it's a low tumbling kick fielded by Logan on the fly at the 20-yard line. And not much doing there. As Yannick Carter down to make the stop. Looks like Travis Lule will get a taste here in the second quarter. You're watching Wendy's Friday Night Football from Vancouver. Back on September 15th, Travis Lule lowered his head and wound up injuring his shoulder in that collision with Montreal Jeff Tisdale. Lule's been out since then, but now comes back into the football game in the 18th game of the year for the BC Lions. They'll play next week in Regina in the Western semifinal and a chance for Lula to prove that maybe he could be well enough to play in that football game. Gives off to Harris on the first down carry at Charleston Hughes. Wraps him up quickly. So we asked Travis Lula about returning to the BC lineup. It's been great, you know, just uh, with the practice week to get back out there with the guys and calling plays in the huddle and getting some live reps. Um, you know, that's, that's huge uh, from, from a confidence standpoint, from a leadership standpoint. It's easier to lead when you got the pads on with the guys. So, um, you know, it was, it was a fun week for me. And, uh, and you know, uh, throwing the ball wise, progressed a little bit. Each day I've been out there to work. Uh, so, so far, so good. Now on second down, they give it off to Harris again. And Andrew Harris busts through the initial tackles, got the first down. Out to the 41-yard line and a pickup of 20 yards. Kes draw play, second and ten. Chaplin said he's not going to make his quarterback push the ball downfield. They just hand it off a little draw play, bring the defensive end up the field, invite him to do that. Andrew Harris says thank you. He moves the chains. Travis Lule, a little different, making some throws in practice and coming out here and taking hits. And certainly Jacques Chaplin, offensive coordinator. Doesn't want to see his quarterback put in harm's way. First down from the 42. Back to the ground to Harris. And he fights his way ahead for a gain of three. So in, in your mind, Matt, if Travis Lule has a decent evening tonight. It won't matter. It won't matter. He's not ready. I don't think his shoulder's ready to sustain football plays. And that is is the problem now this you see buck pierce wincing there with bill rochelle uh, i mean the margin for error in the bc lions quarterback situation is minimal at best buck pierce we know his history travis lule's got a wonky shoulder very unstable joint to begin with and this is going to be telling here now we saw him throw underneath the harris and andrew harris fighting for the first down marker gets it out to the 53 yard line and, you know, so that's my take on it, talking to Travis yesterday in depth, feeling him out. I don't think he's ready to take typical football plays. And if Buck Pierce can get through this game healthy, I think he's your guy moving forward in the playoffs. But Travis said to me, Matt, I just want to go out there and take the reins and get with my guys and go through the process, the initial process of calling plays and getting back in the huddle. First down line to the BC 53. 
And the direct snap to Harris around the corner to go. Andrew Harris puts it down to the 37 yard line for a gain of 20. Direct snap and for a team that's trying to iron out their running situation and creating a new, or dealing with a new philosophy as of four weeks ago, this is made to order. Just 